G'day guys, welcome back to another video and today I'll be reviewing Geelong and Fremantle. This one was at GMHBA and a big win for the Dockers coming down to the Cattery, uh, winning by three points. So yeah, quite an arm wrestle at times this game, but I feel like for the majority of it, yeah, Fremantle definitely had it on their terms, um, playing the way they wanted to play and we didn't really get a great opportunity to be able to sort of yeah have the game on our term you know, sort of on our terms for a little while um good start to the game but then yeah couldn't really do much damage uh on the scoreboard after quarter time it was obviously you know a really good start to the game um yeah we kicked five straight in the opening term and you know the dockers were pretty close by i'm thinking well yeah this could go right down to the wire here usually to long kick something like that you know the opposition might have one or two you know um next to their name, but to only be down by just over a goal. Um, yeah, sort of meant that they were in for the fight. Couldn't get anything going on the scoreboard in the second term. I think we got got close, kicked a point, could have been a goal. Um, and then, yeah, the Dockers just completely took control for the next probably 45, 60 minutes easily. Um, they, yeah, they definitely were a lot better than one goal four. They had field position, they had control of the game, and, um, you know, they they made us pay um, as sort of the game went on in the third term. The floodgates opened up a little bit where they kicked sort of four goals, and, yeah, we only really kicked five for the rest of the match, so five in the first quarter, four in the uh, in the final term. You've got to play, um, yeah, got to get better than one goal between, you know, two quarters, so... Um, that obviously clearly doesn't help, but yeah, just some glaring issues of you know what what I've seen all before, and in this kind of game, you know, I'm def I'm pretty frustrated at the loss and all, but what I'm more disappointed in is thinking, well, you know, you try and go in for a flag, you think, okay, every, if everything goes right, absolutely everything goes perfectly, you know, you're you're half a chance, even though I think at our best we're probably a top six side, and you know, you kind of see today's game and you go, okay, well we're not a top four side um if we're losing at home to it another side that is vying for a top four position without tabana without you know fife who's been out for most of the year and without darcy uh, it's a monumental win and they'll gain a lot of confidence out of it um they're the real deal um we're not the real deal i mean that's that's kind of what these games sort of um sort of tell you i mean even if three men will lose you know by a couple of goals it's it's a brave performance and you know you almost take it as a win because you know down in Geelong pretty hard to get wins so um yeah they they know how to beat us down here um probably we haven't played too many games down here lately I think 2018 was the last time we played um at the Cattery against the Dockers we've played a lot of games over there and we crushed them last year and now it looks like the opposite this time around this year so never question the fight the you know the endeavor you know late in the game but um yeah, you know, early on we were able to sort of, you know, win the ball out of the contest, run and spread and carry and, you know, find our way up forward and, you know, I mean, you have five shots and convert really well, obviously makes the scoreboard look quite nice. But as the game wore on, you know, Fremantle started winning the ball around the contest and then, you know, Fremantle were able to, you know, get the ball on the outside and we'll, I think we'll see in the stats it's going to be quite stark as the uncontested ball that we afforded um, Fremantle and just that, that that's a work rate thing like that's Fremantle working really hard that's us not working hard enough to you know be able to mitigate and prevent that um, uncontested ball and you know when you got time and space like we gave the Dockers you know you're gonna be pretty pretty hard to stop and conversely when we had the ball uh, constantly under pressure um, we, we couldn't kick it clear we, I reckon we had five or six times throughout the game where we just kicked it a five meter pass and then play on then all of a sudden we're under pressure with Fremantle's frontal pressure game um yeah yeah they were, they were far too good and the scoreboard probably flatters us a little bit um uh, Freo had a lot more of the play I thought than we did and you know we we took the game on late I don't know why we don't do it from the from start to finish or at least play like that 85% of the time rather than 60% of the time playing you know attacking football well if you want to win a flag you'll actually actually be brave and move the ball and yeah look just those mistakes like like Cameron a little fumble and you know in the pocket uh, we, we focus on the stuff late but then we also get furious at the stuff throughout the game that could lead to um, potential scores that don't go through 
Uh, yeah, and you see, you know, Tui fumble. And he's literally got all he has to do is just collect the ball and, and kick it through the big sticks, and he fumbles it, and then he's under pressure. Um, then Higgins has two chances to snap snap a goal 30 metres out, and he can't get any any hook on it. So I, whilst his stats today look okay, I still don't know why him or Dalhouse even make it into the team um, when you could be developing, you know, younger guys that their growth is exponential. Higgins and Dalhouse is exponentially going down. Um, so exponentially positive is what I'd rather see. Um, I don't know why they're playing. They, they should be playing only if we have lots of injuries and yeah, they, they should not be regular best 22 players. I don't, don't get it. I will never get it. Um, but yeah, Fremantle took their chances. They were tougher for longer. Um, yeah, they won the con yeah won the contested ball battle. I'm sure, and you know, look, they were really effective moving the ball forward. But we allowed them. <laughs> so I mean, if you allow a team to do what they want, of course they're going to make life pretty difficult. So um, they're not taking away their incredible defensive efforts and you know their uh, tackles that they had and the pressure they delve sort of um yeah dealt to us yeah they were obviously really good and yeah clearly deserved to win the match and we weren't good enough we gave ourselves a chance late um but yeah just weren't weren't quite good enough to get across the line so we won more of the ball that's probably uh, blown out a little bit in the last quarter where we just took the game on and actually you know, played by the way wanted to play um we had you know a bit of bit of inside 50 entry and that was effective early on but as the game wore on uh Fremantle just found a way to we, we could be I felt like we could barely get an inside 50 to be honest and but when we were getting in there you know we saw Cox fly over the top we saw Logue and um Pierce just phenomenal Ryan etc um so one inside 50 battle that, that's always a positive but the efficiency, you know, they're nearly 15% more efficient inside 50 than we were. They had really clean, clear looks and they had some easy goals out the back. And But um, that's that's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens when you give them what they want. Uh, 44 clearances, so we're bashed up a little bit. Um, clearly missing a you know a danger field, but, you know, they're missing five. And um, that just, just underpins and our reliance on Patrick. Um, surprised we won the contested ball, but they won the uncontested ball on the outside nicely. Uh, we took more marks. We sort of went back to that 2021 game plan that doesn't work in 2022 football. Took some good marks inside 50. Pretty solid in the air, all, all considering. Um, yeah, we did take some you know, good marks. It's probably one thing we did well, sort of in that back line, uh, progressively. Got better in that department and, yeah, felt, you know, felt short. So... Um, same tackles but yeah this is yeah this is what, what i really want to look at and, and what was um a pinnacle and why the freo got across the line just we let them walk out of the back line um as soon as freo got out of the back line or, or they caused a turnover now forward 50 you know they'd have a free free player and they'd always have a, a guy to give it to so that's just like that's really good coaching that's really good you know um, knowledge of players knowing where to go and um execution so yeah, they at the moment we got inside their forward fifty. You know, there'd be five dockers on us and no spare cats, of course. So, <sighs> yeah, let's a look at the stats from the teams um, from an individual level. I think yeah, Tom Stewart clearly best on ground for Geelong. Um, you know, forty touches, it's unbelievable. That's a career high for him. He just racked the ball up at will. Fourteen marks as well, nearly a kilometre gained from uh, from Tommy Stewart. He just Absolutely gets the ball on a bit, a few tackles in there, got a clearance. Uh, yeah, I look, I'd, I'd love a team of Tom Stewart's because then I'd, <laughs> we'd, um, I reckon we'd be all good. But he didn't have enough mates today, and he usually doesn't have enough mates. He's, he's usually our best player, which is an indictment really on our midfield, I think. Um, but yeah, he was excellent. He was stopping everything, but also he doesn't just stop, he also attacks. So he's a, he's a double-edged sword in a positive way. He's a real weapon for us. And a very crucial player for us. Uh, the two votes is tough because I, I think it was daylight after Stewart, and there was some solid players sort of in that mix that you know had a real red hot crack. Uh, I really liked Stanley's game. I'm just trying to find him, but yeah, he didn't get stacks of the ball. 
Yeah, I'm kind of in between Stanley and, and Blitzars, sort of how they went about it. I'm going to give the two to Stanley. I did watch the game. I was there live, so it can sometimes be a bit different. Um, but I thought, yeah, his goals were golden. <laughs> um, he took some really good contested grabs. He fought in really hard. Um, he, I felt like he was pretty solid around the ruck. Um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of 50-50 on Blitzars and Stanley. And then, <laughs> in saying that, I really like Stengel getting a vote as well. So he kicked three, um, 14 touches, and five tackles, three clearances. I liked that, you know, early on when the game was you know, quite heated, he was able to sort of yeah, get a few holding the ball tackles. Um, there was a great play on the wing where his kick and his beating three players on one ended up in a goal, and then to finish off with three himself when... Forwards really weren't doing a whole, hell of a lot. Uh, I thought, yeah, Stengel was you know, a really good shining light for us today. Four four votes to Blitzarves. <laughs> 0.5 votes to Blitzarves. So, yeah, Blitzarves was good. Um, really good. He kicked a couple of goals. Um, kicked a nice one right at the end. Good set shot earlier in the game. 20 touches, four marks. 20 hitouts, four clearances. So, yeah, again, he, he gets a fair bit of the ball. Um sort of roaming around the ground. Uh, Guthrie got 35, but honestly, I didn't really notice that he got eight clearances. Um, a lot of in and under stuff and probably not... Yeah, I don't want to get in the discussion of Darcy Parrish and, and Guthrie, but yeah, I didn't see a lot of impact. But anyway, um, he was very good to get 35. Higgins got 21, but again, he doesn't really hurt you. He got, got a bit, few metres gain there, a couple of goal assists, so... He maybe was okay after all at times, and we judge him really harshly. Um, but, yeah, again, I can see another player like Francis Evans that could do something similar, or Cooper Stevens that you know, could play that half-forward role and work his way into the midfield, but my opinion's irrelevant, um, according to Chris Scott. So I really liked Atkins' game, actually. He, Yeah, more so, not the most amazing stats in the world, but just the way he cracked in, you know, 17... Touches, um, four marks, six tackles. He just like had a real red hot dig, and I love that. Parfit got nineteen touches, um, six tackles. Just can't execute properly. Like he can't kick the footy when he's got a kick inside fifty. He just doesn't hit a target ever, um, which is just frustrating. Like we've got enough players that can't kick the footy. We, you know, we don't need more blokes that can't hit targets. Close played a, a pretty decent game, a lot of handballs, but again, he sets up a lot of play, got a goal assist in there, um, hit the stick early on. Isaac Smith, we, probably a bit of a, a downer for Isaac, but I mean, you know, he's, he's sort of um, getting on and probably didn't really have his best game. He usually gets at 25 and sort of you know, 10 marks. He just wasn't able to play the game on his terms today. Um, Duncan, again, is just another guy that's, you know, he's a good player, but he's, you know, he's... He's on the decline. I don't know. He's probably still injured. Um, didn't really get you know much going on in the preseason. I mentioned Stanley. Um, so look, you know, he tries you know, four clearances. He usually has a really good game at the Cattery. Um, yeah, he wasn't at his best today. He had a go, a bit fumbly, I think. Yeah, just um, not quite where he would have liked to have been. Um, Tui got the twenty touches. Again, look, plays okay down in the back line, but. You know, those fumbles late just absolutely kill you. Hall kicked two goals, two. Didn't have stacks of opportunities, but also we kicked it on his head a bit. But also Frio's defence was um, yeah, it was exceptional this afternoon. Myers was uh, barely sighted, um, kicked a point and didn't really do a lot. So got a few tackles in there, which is nice. Um, De Koning was... Yeah, obviously had some one-on-one -on -one contest where he was outpointed, but equally um, he took seven marks himself and he was really good when he was able to sort of take those intercepts. So he'll, he'll be better for the run. Uh, Jezza had another bath. Um, Sicily gave him a bath a few weeks ago and, and he had another bath this week. So it doesn't seem to, when the when uh, the momentum's not going our way, when we're not playing the way we want to play, it just seems to be a bit of a liability and we've paid a lot for him. Um yeah, to not even register a score, it's just pretty crazy for the guy sitting on top of the Coleman, or was. Uh, Cole Jasney, again, I don't know why. He does a couple of nice things, you know, some weeks, and then other weeks he turns the ball over in the middle and gets goals kicked on him. 
Anyway, um, O'Connor is a shell of himself. You know, he, he was one of the one of the really good small defenders in 2019, but going backwards. Um, Dale House kicked a goal in the last quarter, so he's solidified for the next five years. Got getting a five year deal out of that. Um, yeah, seven touches. Buse just barely sees the footy half the time. I don't know if he just locks to his opponent, doesn't do anything else. Holmes disappointing um, that he got an injury, so he wasn't able to sort of really play the way he wanted to play. Um, Dempsey didn't even get a kick, but a few handballs in there. Found it pretty tough, minus five minutes gain. Um, so there you go. That's a bit of a look at, yeah, that's pretty much a, a rough overview of the game. Uh, next week, we've got GWS at Monica Oval, and this could be anything, really. Um, yeah, don't know what it could be, really. I mean, the, we saw what the Giants did today against the Crows, 59-point win. Um, a big win for them. I mean, they'd probably be favourites, I'd say. The Giants, we don't travel very well. We haven't travelled very well for a long time. Um, so we won in the final, which was over in the West. We lost at home. So, they, yeah, they just have a really good record against us. Um, I'd be probably favouring the Giants here um, to beat us. So yeah, I'd be I'd be a bit surprised if we won away. We don't really not even win at home at the moment. So um, I'd be a bit scared to think what away looks like. But yeah, Dock is way too good. Um, looking like you know every bit of a top four side. Um, yeah, they're definitely finals bound. Clearly, just a matter of whether they're top six or a top four side. I yeah, the way they're playing could be top four, but I don't know how good we are yet either. Uh, Clearly, we're not a top four side, so I know we're not the top end talent, um, and I know we're below the teams like Melbourne, Sydney, um, Brisbane, I guess. Even though we beat them a few weeks ago at home, but yeah, that's uh, that's it, guys. I'm pretty flat, Geelong in a bit of no man's land at the moment, so yeah, it's um, it's not nice to sort of accept that. Yeah, we're going from. Um, if everything goes right, we might get a flag um, to now we're just going to scrape into finals and maybe win a final. So it's a big slap in the face and it's not nice. But anyway, uh, Fremantle too good. Geelong not good enough to get the job done. And that's pretty much it from me, guys, on the review front. Hope you enjoyed my saltiness. Um, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Click the like button, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, I'll keep churning content out as long as Geelong keep playing. So... Appreciate you guys joining in. Um, yeah, do all the good stuff with yeah, subscribing and liking and appreciate you guys, you know, that tune in each and every week for the press conference and um, appreciate y'all. So take care, guys. I'll see you on the next video.